Well, welcome to today's panel on reusable packaging and opportunities within IoT. I'm Rob Franzo. I'm with Qualcomm Technologies. I'm responsible for uh, technology platforms as it relates to reverse logistics uh, ecosystem. And today I'm joined by uh, three industry experts in this area. Hey, Thomas, why don't you say, tell us a few things about yourself. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Rob. It's a pleasure. Um, yeah, it's uh, Thomas. Uh, I'm uh, in charge of Heliod Europe. Uh, we are a Sigfox Zero-G operator, which means we are providing effectively telecommunication services, enabling IoT, and as such part of a global network, which is called Sigfox. Thank you. Very good. And, and Scott, a few words yeah. about yourself and Nimili. Sure. Yeah. So I'm the, the vice president, uh, you know, previous CEO of Nimblink, now an air gain company. And we're really focused on uh, 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 creating, uh, you know, being a world leader in advanced wireless connectivity solutions. And here I'm really focused on uh, our asset tracking solution using the LTM network. I'm looking forward to uh, discussing uh, how to use that in uh, the reusable packaging uh, arena. Very good. Thank you. And Steve, how about yourself and, and Rumby? Hi, uh, Rob. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm with uh, Romby and uh, Steve Miller, and uh, um, we're a uh, we're a logistics visibility company and uh, based out of Silicon Valley. And uh, and uh, for us, we enable uh, monitoring and tracking of reusable packaging by using sensors and platform and connectivity and analytics tools. And uh, so, really, really happy to be here today. Thanks. Thank you, guys. The reason for this panel is uh, Reusable Packaging Association is very involved in various tiers of the participants within the reusable packaging ecosystem to boost inventory visibility and management across the supply chain. So um, massive type communications, IoT, has been described as a key driver for industry Ford Auto and supply chain modernization. In simple terms, how would each of you view that your company is making use of this technology, how it's changing the way commercial goods move through supply chain, and what visibility it is providing you and your customers? I'd like to start with a term of IoT. We all know the term IoT, and it means a lot of things to many people. But um, maybe coming from Europe a little bit, um, uh, it's, uh, I have a, another interpretation of that. I call it the Internet of Truth. And what I mean by that is that um, it creates actually responsibility for the supply chain. And, and, and uh, this is something we have seen as a major change in attitude with the users, the manufacturers in Europe. As you possibly well know, in Europe, we have uh, various uh, strong initiatives around climate change. Green Deal of the European Union. There have been laws implemented, uh, which basically create even sometimes criminal liability for you know for things like child labor, anti-slavery laws, and so forth across the whole uh, supply chain. And we see this as a major motivator uh, for clients. So it has definitely changed over the last two years. That's the that's one thing. And how it changes in supply chain, I think it's a question of price. Uh, the visibility which we all want to create and can create re requires the price of watching to go down massively. And that's that's our business. Thank you. Very good. Thanks, Thomas. And Scott? Yeah, as we look at the uh, the technology that's uh, that's coming and it has been coming, as you mentioned, uh, you know, this massive type of communication is a driver. You know, um, if you think about all the low power wide area networks of you know Sigfox and LoRa and Cellular that have just evolved over the last uh, three years, it's just it's, it's exciting for the opportunity to actually now be able to track and and send uh, low data rates and small packets. Anywhere in the world, uh, where that wasn't even, you know, there wasn't, even, you know, two G was interesting from a cellular perspective, but it just it was so power hungry, you couldn't run battery operated uh, products. So, so as we look at the supply chain, you know, if you if you look inside the factory where there's an infrastructure, it's been happening a long time with RFID and vision technologies. It's really when the uh, um, the material or you know if it's raw material or finished goods comes in in that total supply chain that that chain of trust uh, that uh, that Thomas just mentioned about you lose it. Uh, just give you a, an interesting example. Uh, just last week we shipped uh, four asset trackers out to a customer, and I won't name the uh, the 
the, the, the transport company, uh, but it's well known and, and uh, it, it was shipped to me overnight and they told us exactly where it was on their reporting and it did not get there. And, uh, and then about, you know, 24 hours later, it did not get there. And so when we explained to them where it was and showed them where it was and told them what we were shipping, then we got the trust and the real answer. Oh, there was a disruption in supply chain. Uh, but we all were, were trusting, uh, uh, you know, carriers. So it's really, um, really critical in, the, in this space. And I think we'll talk more about, uh, you know, how these uh, packets, especially now with, uh, with cellular, we're not interfering now with the cell phones anymore, which allows the machine type with the LTM sliced off network, we actually have a true machine to machine network that uh, that we can actually use that's uh, that's licensed and, and uh, which is really exciting and allowing these uh, these opportunities to come forward. Very good, thank you. And Steve. And I, I think for us, what uh, what I see is really it's enabling scale, scalability, and uh, and because of some of the things that Scott and, and Thomas had talked about there on on price points and and the ability to communicate and. And I think for us, we, 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 we talk about two things. One is it, it creates access. For us, what's important is creating access to verifiable and reliable data. And, and I think scale will enable that. And, uh, and, uh, and I think, you know, for a long time, people have wanted to be really in control of their supply chain and less dependent on, on, uh, on historical or legacy things. And I think this, this push with uh, with this technology will enable that, and so, and across all nodes, you know, just not at certain points, but across all nodes, I think there will be this access to verifiably more reliable, more reliable data. Gentlemen, all three of you, Thomas, you brought up a really good point about trustworthiness, and and that you know the idea that we have all this data, but if you're gonna make operational decisions and, um, and, and automate through distributed application, smart contracts, if you're using a distributed trust ledger or distributed ledger technology, um, you know, how do you in fact implement that? And it's that interchange and the interoperability. And let's transition now, and we'll come back to some of those points. Um, you know, as we look at reusable packaging products and the related systems for the reuse uh, and a stable platform for integrating this trustworthy, especially trustworthy data capture, because, you know, there's not humans involved, it's machine to machine. So it's inherently more trustworthy as long as, the, you know, the device is doing what it says it's doing. The ability then to analyze and then exchange change and share those, you know, that data. Um, can each of you explain how you're deploying these capabilities with your, in your platform today with your customers? Okay, maybe I'll, uh, I'll get started on that. Maybe I'll just use a, um, a use case uh, and uh, just kind of explain it. Uh, you know, so we're working with, uh, you know, a customer that uh, uh, manufactures uh, very, um, at the end of the line, their, their product is, is large and bulky. So it needs a very specific um, transport container um, that they reuse uh, from the time it comes off the line all the way to the shipment to their end customer. And so they have uh, tens of, of thousands of these uh, reusable containers. And if they're not at the right place at the right time, the line shuts down. Uh, and so what they've done in the past is just made sure they owned enough of these containers, uh, and they, you know, they're not cheap, and they treat them almost like paper clips, uh, and and they're they're all over, and they still weren't in the right place at the right time. So by by placing uh, you know, a, a, a battery operated tracker that could actually uh, um, you know report out the location at you know variable times, uh, and then starting to track um, all of them in and in knowing where they are we've been able to significantly reduce the number of uh, containers that they, they really needed to own. So which was a, a nice balance sheet uh, uh, reduction. And most importantly, and you know, just in the fourth quarter at the end of the year, as they were driving out manufacturing, uh, where they were tracking these, they did not have to shut the line down. Uh, and so it increased revenue and it, and, and it made customers much happier. And so this data flowing up through, uh, uh, through, the, you know, uh, through the cellular technology into the cloud with uh, you know, uh, you know, dots on the map and dwell time. And then now you can start really driving analytics to understand uh, where these uh, reusable containers are. That's a great example. Thanks for that, Scott. Um, Steve, how, what, what's your take on it? You know, Rome B is a, obviously, a, you've been around for quite a few years doing this as well. And uh, what's your take on it? 
Yeah, uh, we've uh, our, our business roots go back about a little over seven years now, and uh, and uh, you know reusable packaging has been a uh, an important use case for us, and so. We, we've deployed it really in two ways. So one, where packaging exists within a uh, within an environment, within a factory, so it could be used for work in progress use cases and packaging needs to move through the plant. And uh, and then we've also deployed it on packaging that need, that goes out and needs to be recovered and returned. And, and even the, the in-plant work in progress, I mean, it needs to be returned. It needs to be, if it starts at A, it needs to get back to A eventually or else you're going to have that packaging shortfall as what uh, as what Scott described there and uh, and for us we typically are tracking data that could be lo location data any type of sensing data dwell time data route data and uh, and and we use that data to highlight utilization rates uh, cycle times um, empty versus full analysis and i think that's an important metric people want to know am i am i empty or am i full and uh, so we we use where i the route i've taken and where i've been helps us to be able to determine whether something or sensing data helps us determine whether the packaging is uh, is empty or full and it's always about cycles velocity utilization and uh, do they have the right packaging at the right place do they have too much or too little um, those are generally the outcomes that uh, that we produce for the customers. Very good. Thank you for that, Steve. Mm -hmm. and, and Thomas, uh, what's your take from Elliot? Yes. Um, well, I can only support actually what has been said. I think Scott made an important point here, though, which is um, that um, if you think about it, the motivation, at least as we experience, of a customer in the first place is actually very simple very simple things like it's like oh i i lose them you know or they are they are not really there on time and i have some production so it starts at a very low level and then like for example the supermarket chain yeah like using pallets and so forth yeah half pallets and this kind of stuff yeah uh, suddenly when they see what's happening you know once you push the digital horizon into their operation then suddenly they come up with all these other ideas. <laughs> and say, oh my God, you know, I think Scott, you mentioned it, you know, that, oh my God, my balance sheet, or oh, I have more revenues. And wow, you know, it opened up a thing. And that's actually, uh, that's a funny situation. I feel sometimes uh, it's a shame for all of us here. We are, you know, we are facing the pressure of price, you know, to, to get in, but, and we have to be very competitive and we will be. But it opens up value, which goes so far beyond of the value of the load carrier. That's amazing. Yeah. Sorry, I stop here. <laughs> no, no, excited. perfect. No, no. You, uh, thank you for stopping. But you got you nailed it because it's about value. It's about value creation. And the other element, and we'll talk about this in this next question, is you know I alluded to digitization, migration, transformation, and and exactly what you highlighted is that discovery, right? Is that as they implement the to meet the current operational challenges, it opens up a, a whole new space, uh, multi dimensions of of further optimizations. Which brings us then to you know we, we've gone through some good examples of sense, track, and trace devices and software for data collection and analysis, right? Um, how do we see these? Today, where we are, what are the needs for tomorrow as, as we start doing our road mapping and thinking about where as an industry we need to be focused? What are some of these improvements that you, you all are seeing from your real life? Steve, why don't you lead us off? Um, you know, I think there's a lot of different hardware out there and, uh, and uh, that, you know, is, is capable. And uh, um, there's platform plays out there that will collect the data. And uh, I think probably one of the most important things from my point of view is the ability to consume the data. It's one thing, it's not good enough anymore to simply just visualize it, and, uh, but it's about being able to consume it and, and do something with it and take action. And, uh, and I think that's, uh, as people are assessing, uh, you know, what they might want to do or what they're considering doing, it's about, uh, it's about the output. How, what are you going to get and how are you going to actually action it? And uh, and that's you know the the other pieces are just tools right they're enablers but uh, 
and, and there's lots of capable things out there, but it's that action and, and, and does the platform, does it produce that for you that you can do something with it? Very good. Thank you. Thank you for that, Steve. Um, and uh, Thomas, what, what do you think? I think we have, we have two, two challenges uh, over the next, I would say five years even. Uh, the first one is to make the de device which gives us all this information, the sensorics, which is the necessary to do this, uh, to really bring them into the reusable internal packaging itself. The cost of the form factor on the outside, the affixing it, the, the, this is too high of a cost. It has to be really part, and we do it today with RFID, but it has to move one level further. That's the one thing. And the second thing is, it's the quid pro quo for that, recyclability. Yeah, we cannot have billions and billions of batteries, ultimately. They may be alkaline and not lithium, whatever, but we cannot have that. So we need to have an absolutely clear strategy all together as an industry to make sure that we can prove that we recycle that stuff which we put in in the first place. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good point and so so spot on. And, and Scott, um, from a NIMBY link point of view, uh, what's your take? Yeah, on, uh, from, from an industry is? point of view, um, I think we've talked about um, global connectivity. That's still actually a challenge. Uh, you know, we've we've got disparate uh, you know networks, technologies. You know, so I see as we go forward, you know. Um, because you know each of these uh, low power wide area networks are very uh, useful, and I think they can work together. Uh, so as you you think about Sigfox, you think about Lauren, you think about cellular. Um, different countries are deploying different ways, and when we actually move a product from one country to the other, how do we actually um, benefit from the infrastructure that's happening? Because right now there's still these silos that are happening, and uh, you know and specifically in the cellular, uh, you know you you, you know. We've got we've got a global um, cellular um, technology with all the multiple bands. We've got global sims, but we don't have a global software tunable uh, 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 antenna that can be tuned as it's moving around. And so you got to build a big box. So so I think some of the technologies for if it's moving um, around outside, you know, right now we're all set for for software for hardware when you're in uh, in a particular region and the product doesn't leave the region. But I, I believe as we go global, how to how to um, think about and how how we're going to do as an industry to to integrate these various technologies that are that are you know very good technologies and bring them together. Thank you for that. Uh, all three of you made very good points. And and as we look at it, for instance, reducing the cost, the integration, the form fit, the batteries, uh, bringing down the power, and uh, you know as as we look at the, the challenges around. Uh, the globalization is as we look at you know how the standards are moving forward and then how we as a as a industry segment um, are are take, making use and applying uh, you know that that unifying um, global network for machine to machine type communications and so it's going to be exciting. So let's talk about a couple of key return on investment metrics um, and what would be some of the key ROI return on investment metrics. Yeah, I think uh, it was mentioned before, I think utilization rates of the assets, yeah, i.e. Uh, standstill period idle times reduction, clearly. Uh, I think that, that I see one, uh, these are the easy ones. Uh, yes. The ones where we see more difficulties of proving it is on the revenue generation side, i.e. how this enables more revenue, difficult to get hold of, but we know it's there. Yeah, I think, you know, like, um, as Thomas mentioned, uh, the utilization, making sure that, you know, no matter what it is in a pooling environment, um, I think as we think about embedded, um, how do we embed a platform that would then enable um, more sensors to be connected? Uh, you know, how do you, how do we enable maybe um, as a mobile access point for Bluetooth sensors to, because then we can start looking at that revenue generation of um, knowing the temperature, knowing, uh, you know, uh, I think Steve earlier mentioned, you know, if it's uh, full or not, we start thinking about, um, you know, location is very, very important. And as we look at um, embedding onto a reusable package, where do those packages, what industry do they go into and how do we actually create a platform that's actually scalable for the uh, uh, the ongoing needs that are going to be coming? Yeah, I, uh, I mean, I think in building an ROI, the first step is really, from my experience, what is the clear problem statement that is, uh, you know, is trying to be solved here? And 
you know, that we need to be able to ways to integrate sensorless data with censored data, because I think, uh, you know, these returnable packaging doesn't travel alone and it doesn't travel as single. So, um, and there's lots of other data that exists out there that generate time and date stamp data. And, uh, and so I think it's, uh, you know, a full ROI can be achieved by integrating sensorless data with sensor data. And so that uh, you, you can tag a percentage and know enough to then be able to, as if you know it all, you know, because you might have variances where you have high volume, but low valued assets, or you have the reverse and the economics might not work to tag everything, but you might have access to data that you can combine with, with censored uh, packaging to, to really give you that holistic view. And I think that the ROI comes from what everybody talked about is cycles and utilization. But I also think there's, ways out there where the data can be used to reveal where customers might be circumventing a company's business model and uh and you and you can find that and then you can and that's how you can produce revenue that you might not have normally known know you missed i really appreciate that and l- let's bring it home with uh, you know just looking out a little bit a little bit further we're, we're really talking about intelligence right uh, you know how do you see um your companies participating in intelligent connected supply chains with the ver- reverse logistics that make use of reusable containers. Sure. Yeah, I, I you know I think from uh, from our perspective, we're going to continue to uh, um, you know create the uh, the edge um, sensing devices that will actually be able to you know you know uh, be a platform to capture more of that data to be able to uh, um, feed that data. You know, be, you know, like we talked about, maybe integrating the various technologies. And one of the things I see coming forward is uh, uh, the precision of location uh, is really uh, going to be, uh, you know, uh, we're going to be able to use less power and we're going to be able to get more precise. And and just the more precise we can get indoors and outdoors, we'll actually build to that uh, ability to intelligence. And um, and ultimately, uh, you know, I think both uh, you know, Thomas and Steve and, and actually you, Rob, talked about trust. I, 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 as, we, as we do these things, I think the trust of the data, the trust of the sensing, the trust of the intelligence is going to uh, just get better and better as we go forward, which then um, might uh, you know allow for less tracking. Actually, we, which in the industry you might uh, think, well, well, that's kind of counterintuitive. Why do you want to track less? But actually, we can track track less and do it more accurately and do it with the trust. It's actually going to solve some of the green issues, some of the battery issues, some of the uh, issues, and still get the right product to the right place at the right time. You know, I think historic. what we've been doing is producing insights. And uh, for us, it's really about foresights and becoming predictable. And so for us, it's really about um, evolving so that it becomes very much foresights enabled. And, uh, and I think it, by thinking that way, it, it, it naturally reduces risk um, and, uh, and, and optimizes uh, uh, businesses' process and things. That's very elegant. Thank you for that. And, and uh, Thomas, yourself? Yes, sir. Uh, um, as Scott already, I think, indicated it, uh, I think we need to do more with less. Yeah, which means, you know, whatever, less energy, less radiation, et cetera, et cetera. Because that's clearly uh, one important thing. I think the second item, I really do believe, I mentioned, I mentioned climate change, I mentioned Green Deal, European Union, which is pushing very hard the supply chain has to be visible. We have to be responsible for all the aspects of the supply chain. I think we want to be there. So uh, we want to be one key element in making this really, I mean, it sounds strange, but like a pl- better planet. Yeah, so I think that that's what we're really here for. And, uh, and, 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 and it's, a, it's a massive task. You know, it's not easy. Uh, that's what it's all about. It's all about, you know, making... Uh making a sustainable world, a sustainable economy, um, and, and one that, that delivers, you know, delivers that expectation. You know, and, and, and Steve, what you were saying about moving from, um, you know, historic insights to be more predictive, 
um, and, and having that so that you can anticipate needs, right? And having that, you know, everybody in the industry talks about digital twins, but it is about trustworthiness of that data that's in there. We all, I, I'll speak for the whole panel, thank you to the Reusable Packaging Association uh, for bringing us together to share with you um, our, our observations and our expectations for the future. Thank you.